Hey y'all, Dustin Schaefer here. So we're gonna talk about the hydration, the keto flu. We're gonna talk about uh, sodium and salt um, in this keto journey, wherever you're at in this journey. And these are some downfalls that I see that people just have to have a hard time in the brain to get through. Um, it's quite evident that the leading researchers and scientists will support a higher sodium diet on uh, a keto style diet because your body depletes and, and it has a, the keto diet and being in ketosis is a natural diuretic. So it can dump some of those extra fluids on your system. So um, so I have two things here that I use on a hydration component, but I wanna paint a little picture first before I show you these two things and talk to you about how you can test yourself to see what it is. Because a lot of times people going through this keto flu, it's usually just dehydration. Now there's other variables, but that's the common one and, and that most likely will help you feel better. So. What happens now in the world we live in is that too many people are using filtered water. They've been going low sodium. Um, their hydrational balances are off. Their potassium, their magnesium, their sodium, their, their electrolytes are off. And so when you're in ketosis and you have this diuretic, like maybe you've been noticing yourself pee a lot more. Well, you're, maybe, you're creating a hydration inefficiency where you're not, you're not balanced. And when that happens, you feel not as good. Cramping, headaches, fatigue are simple common things of dehydration. But it also matters where you live. My, my team in Florida, they don't seem to have the same problems as the team in Southern California or Arizona, Nevada, because it's a desert. So if you're active, if you've been low sodium a long time, if you use filtered water like reverse osmosis or drink a lot of bottled water that isn't really that good for us from a hydration perspective because they over filtered it and then you drink it and you're expecting it to be really good for us. So these are things that a lot of people are misunderstanding and they don't realize why it's different for them than somebody else. Um, so what I wanna do is just show you the simple recipe to correct it. You don't have to worry about all those other things. Um, I do recommend if you drink bottled water or if you drink uh, reverse osmosis water, the tank underneath your, your, your sink, that you need to take this way more serious because most likely you're leaning towards the dehydration side of things. So here we go. Um, what I recommend is a little test. If you feel not great, I recommend a simple test and it's a test to tell you that hydration is a factor for you. What you do, uh, I love real salt, the Himalayan's okay, um, uh, Celtic salt is okay. I like real and Celtic because it's less expensive and it, it does the same thing. Um, and so what I do is I recommend taking a 16th, one 16th of a teaspoon of salt. If you don't feel great, uh, if you've been noticing sluggishness or crampiness and you just put it in a, in a cup of water, you drink it down and then 30 minutes do it again. You can do a little bit more than that but that's, that's kind of the sweet spot. And if you notice within 30 or 40 minutes that you feel better, your hydrations are your hydration is low. So that tells me that it's not something that you just do once and you solve it. You need to constantly be implementing more electrolytes and more sodium in your diet. Why do I use salt? It's easy to do. Um, but keep in mind, we need more potassium, magnesium, other things like that. So what I recommend is we have a really cool product that I, I've been standing behind. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing product. You can get the link down below to order it. And it's a great tool that it has potassium and has all the other things that you need that the salt doesn't give you. But at the same time, what I'm gonna recommend is start increasing your salt intake. Oversalt your food, start putting pinches of salt in your water. Um, if you ever notice you need a bump, <laughs> you can drink pickle juice. That used to be the old way we used to do it. Now you can just take a 16th of a, of a teaspoon, toss in a cup of water, drink it down. It will taste salty and you'll start to feel better. But now once you get your tank filled, once you get your electrolytes up and your sodium levels up, now it's just about maintaining it. But remember, you may be already have an empty tank or you may be drinking reverse osmosis water that actually causes dehydration. It depletes out your electrolytes and your minerals. So, um, so you may have to do more or just add more to it. It's a simple recipe. So start adding more salt, um, start adding the right hydration tools and we'll take care of you and get you the results you need and that keto flu will start to go away. You'll feel better, you have more energy, focus, mood, sleep. And the last tip I would give you is start increasing things like peppers, if you can tolerate peppers. Um, green peppers are awesome. Start increasing things like, uh, and some of you are gonna go, peppers aren't keto. Listen, you're not, unless it's medically induced ketosis, you don't need to go over the board crazy here, but avocado has a lot of potassium in it. So start increasing your foods that have more potassium too. That's just an extra added bonus. So y'all hydrate well, and uh, we'll see you in the next week. Cheers, y'all. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. For the next video of the series, check out right here, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that we send out the next video, you get notified, and you can check out the latest on the keto journey. Cheers, y'all.